But again, yeah, part of our journey when we started this is we weren't thinking about that someday there's going to be millions of people, private users across the country that have all kinds of different um, light electric vehicle types. They call them devices in a lot of different industries. Um, when we first started this, through the press and everything, we started getting tons of calls from um, property development managers um, saying, you know, we've got one of the nicer high-rise buildings here and some of these people have $5,000 e-bikes or whatever and we just told them they can't charge in the building and that's a problem and and then as across the as things started to unfold we started to get other inquiries like that well what do we do um and so for us that that's kind of i think one of the, the other major growth areas for for kind of upstarts like us up here is how do we service that how do we make it easy how do we have protected bike covers for them while they're charging outside but the um it's clear that that this is the big change that has to happen. So for us, it, you know, that curve is, start, is, is still growing quite exponentially in terms of private ownership. And historically where that happened was, most people didn't even know what an e-bike was in 2015. And then once, once the um, kind of shared operators like Jump and other, the other e-bike and scooter operators came out, everybody did a de facto test ride on these. And then after the, during the pandemic, tons of millions of people went out and bought. And now there's all these, e-bikes and scooters out there charging the buildings with very little solutions to charge them. So I, I think that is kind of the next piece of this pie that, that I think we can all help solve for. Yeah, um, 